So, hello, everybody. I'm Delphine Le Goff. I'm from the University of Brest, and I will talk about a study we conducted in Brittany for the Spices Project. This is a qualitative research, and the name of our study is Barriers and Facilitators to Cardiovascular Primary Prevention in a French Rural Deprived Area, Exploration of Caregivers and Patients' Experiences by Qualitative Interviews. So what's the international context? Cardiovascular diseases are the first mortality cause worldwide, with more than 17 million deaths in 2012. So uh, we raised the SPICES project, which means scaling up packages of intervention for cardiovascular disease prevention in selected sites in Europe and sub-Saharan Africa. This is a H2020 program. It, it's an implementation project based on the WHO Innovative Care for Chronic Condition Framework. It's gathering five countries around CVD primary prevention interventions. So we work with uh, England, Belgium, France, Uganda, and South Africa. And we decided to have a special focus on populations that are currently excluded from prevention. Uh, what is our setting? This is the local context. Uh, for people who don't know Brittany, uh, Centre-Ouest Bretagne is a territory with no access to sea. And what you can see on these um, maps is that uh, it's a low density population country. It's about uh, 100,000 inhabitants and people are poor. You can see on the maps on the right that uh, the population distribution is over the coast and the taxable incomes, they are very higher near the, near the sea and not inside. There is also a low settlement of general practitioner and a high mortality, high cardiovascular mortality. It's 19% for men and 38% for women. So our research question was, uh, what are the barriers and the facilitators to cardiovascular primary prevention implementation for caregivers and patients' point of view of a rural deprived area? So we conducted qualitative semi-structured interviews. We, our interviews were based on an international shared interview guide on CVD primary prevention, which was developed by Makahari team, the Ugandan team, and it was based on the WHO service ability and availability and readiness assessment tool. We made a purpose, pur purposive samplings of GPs, pharmacists, nurses, patients and patients' family. And we made a double-blinded thematic analysis, then mind mappings for each group. The teams that were explored uh, in the interview guide were cardiovascular prevention, cardiovascular health promotion in the setting, actors of CVD prevention, capacities for CVD prevention, patients and healthcare professional representations, barriers and facilitators in implementing CVD prevention and possible solutions. So that's how it worked. We had our international interview guide provided by Macarere. We translated it in French and then we allocated the items to the more adapted population and we interviewed GPs, pharmacists, nurses, patients and patients' family. We adapted the guides following the interview, the coding of the interviews, and we went till theoretical data saturation. Then we made results, mapping results for each group, and then we merged the results. So our interviews were conducted from September 2017 to December 2018. We interviewed 13 GPs, 11 pharmacists, 14 nurses, 12 patients, and 12 fa patients' family members. And we had around one to two interview guide adaptations. For the GPs, mean duration of the interviews were 61 minutes. We had 163 open codes and five general themes. For pharmacists, the mean duration was 37 minutes with 350 open codes and five general themes. 
for nurses, it was 30 minutes uh, interview at mean and to 200 open coded and 11 general teams. For patients, 27 minutes, 240 open codes, 26 teams. And for family members, we had almost 500 codes and five general teams. So it's how it looks when it's merging. So I'll try to explain all these plots and then I think we can discuss it even after because there's so many things to do. Uh, what you can see here is the result for the three healthcare professional and they first describe their own job. Pharmacists describe what a pharmacist is, GP describe GP, nurses describe nurses. But then you can also see that for pharmacists and GPs, they almost have the same vision of the system and they describe organizational problems. Healthcare system, prevention resources, prevention organization, healthcare organization, and they also talk about patient. Maybe pharmacists have um, a more populational way of thinking because they talk about way of life as, as something independent. Nurses, they go in something very much more pragmatic. So how does it work? How can we improve? They talk about reorganizing prevention, prevention's key point to reinforce, um, adapting prevention, concrete prevention means. But they also propose something that is uh, innovative for French system as creating prevention network that wasn't said even by pharmacists or GPs. And if you look at patients and family, then it's just wonderful. It's so rich. Um, patients and family also talk about healthcare system organization, GP prevention role, human resources, prevention message spread, prevention enablers, but they also describe um, in a very sharp way what the difficulties and the, the facilitators can be. So uh, they talk about access to care, uh, material resources, insurance costs, but also about digital network access. As I told you, it's a low density population site and people have very big difficulties to get modern stuff as internet. They also talk about COP peculiarities. COP is Pays Centre-Ouest Bretagne, so that's the setting where we are. And it's a kind of uh, two sides of a coin. Um, they talk about traditional diet, for example, as something that is um, a barrier because it's a lot of uh, charcuterie, deli, a lot of salty butter, but also it's a, um, a country where, where people do gardening, they eat vegetables and a very low uh, processed food. They also talk about social isolation and they feel isolated geographically and socially, but uh, they also speak a lot about um, meetings and alcohol during the meetings. So for people who know French guys, I think you get what we speak about. They also talked about poverty, it's something, something that we were already aware. And um, talking more precisely about CBD prevention, they talk about the invulnerability and we asked for patients that were sick, patients in primary prevention, but also we talked with patients within tertiary prevention. They have a huge knowledge about cardiovascular prevention, but they also have misbeliefs. And there is a competition between their knowledge and these misbeliefs. So their risk per perception is wrong. Um, cardiovascular risk is for others, not for me. And they feel they quite they have fear about being sick, but there is also fatalism and a um, kind of dichotomy. You're sick you're not sick. And they don't see um, cardiovascular prevention as a continuum from health to, uh, to sickness. Um, they feel it's quite a wild card. It happens when it 
when it has to happen and you cannot deal with that. It's, um, you, can, you cannot do anything about that. And they also speak about dramatic news stories, uh, like uh, I remember um, a patient talking about um, a young boy of 12 year age who uh, did a heart attack playing football. And for this patient, this was cardiovascular disease. So if this young boy who was 12, who was playing died, then he who was 40, there was nothing he could do against cardiovascular disease. And what was very interesting about talking with families is that um, they raised almost the same drawing about cardiovascular risk uh, perception and prevention, but they could also be a barrier. And that was quite new for our team. Family, for example, could have uh, unhealthy uh, health behavior as smoking. Uh, there was a lot of taboo about speaking uh, about cardiovascular disease prevention. And they also talked about self-care difficulties for patients. So um, what was interesting is that the five group uh, had a common vision of the field. Uh, they feel there was a disconnection between national prevention programs and professionals on the field. They also described the rural area as protective and aggressive for the health. Um, you could promote healthy diets and this could be in balance with isolation and lack of structures um, to do sport, for example. Healthcare professional um, mainly talked about lack of time, payment, and training, and that's a verbatim of a, a GP. Uh, if something on in the, it's something in the end that we were not very well trained. We have been well trained on the list of cardiovascular factor, but what must be done to help people change their habits? We have almost no training. As, doctor, as doctors, we love to make beautiful diagnoses and deal with therapeutics to treat people with real diseases, wrongly without doubt. We may not be that prevention culture packed into the body. Patient, I talked uh, about invulnerability. This is a verbatim for that. Uh, patient told us, in fact, that is, uh, we always think that is for others at 40 years old. I would have been told at 43 that I, might, I will make a heart attack I never thought. Another one told us, we have to do a lot of things, but afterwards, when we see things like that, we say, well, everyone is at risk, in fact. I told you about families and taboo. Uh, um, a woman told us, uh, in family gatherings, we avoid matter of discords, speaking about cardiovascular prevention. And uh, there was a, uh, also this familial transmission of CVD risky behaviors. Uh, a woman was, uh, she said this astonishing thing to me, we built smokers. Another one told us, I, I smoke, we smoke. But um, we had an innovative solution and in all of that uh, was said. Um, caregivers talked about a new healthcare professional involved in prevention. Um, it seems to exist, exist in other countries, but not in ours. They talked about structuring a network of existing healthcare professionals to um, deal with prevention. And they also talked about group sessions for prevention addressed to the community. So um, this work is not perfect. It has limits, but it also has strengths. We um, used the in initial single international questionnaire. Um, to my mind, it was maybe less focused on specific field problems, but then it allows us to have a joint perception of field barriers and facilitators around this, the five countries of the SPICES project. Uh, and we had one research team per type of interviewees. So we had uh, 10 people working on this project, 10 researchers. Uh, so we had a very heterogeneous sharpness of coding and theme classification. As you, say, uh, as you saw, we had five for GPs and pharmacists, and it was almost the same big themes, but it was completely different when we came to nurses and to patients. But then we could um, 
assume that we have a very good triangulation of data through social and professional groups and researchers' analysis. And for our perspectives, um, we, we feel with the SPICES project in, in France, we have to fill a gap between the six national brands focusing on, a, and these plans are focusing on dissemination of prevention messages and knowledge and local needs. We will use the innovative solutions proposed by patients. Um, we already began a population screening to enhance risk perception, and we will lead group sessions to improve CVD risk prevention in the community. Thank you.